All right, so 2x times 3, excuse me, 6x squared. Now if we go 2x times, now what you got to pay attention to is you're multiplying by negative 7. Or you're going to multiply the signs together as well. So what's 2x times negative 7? Negative 14x, good. Okay. So that was distributing the 2x to the second set of parentheses. Now we're going to take the 4 and multiply it by the 3x. What's 4 times 3x? 12x. And then the last one, be 4 times negative 7 gives you negative tw uh, 4 times negative 7. There's no x's there. So it's going to be negative 28. Is that okay? Now you would get, just so we understand this, because if I go like 2 times 3, that gives me 6, right? Does 3 times 2 still give me 6? Does anybody remember what that property is? So let's go to C. Commutative. Okay, so the commutative property works with multiplication. So if I would take like 3x minus 7 times 2x plus 4, do it in that order. So take this 3x and distribute that, and then the negative 7 and distribute that. I'm going to get the exact same thing I got there. So the order that you multiply doesn't matter. Does that make sense? Okay. Now when we do this, we're going to generate usually two things like that. Those are like terms, correct? Because they both have the same variable with the same exponent. So we're going to add those together. So we get 6x squared, negative 14x plus 12x is negative 2x, and then minus 28. And that would be the product of 2x plus 4 and 3x minus 7. Yes? Good question. So, so the question is, guys, is will, will this order ever change? And, and the, the rule is that when we're done, we want to make sure that these three things are written in what we call descending order, which means that the exponents start with the greatest one possible, so in this case, a 2, and then this goes to 1, and there is an exponent here of 0 on this last one. Okay, we just don't write it. Because um, x to 0 is just 1, right? So that changes to 1 and multiply it by 28. Excuse me, 28. We want to make sure that our answer is written in that form, but the ones that we work on right now, it will just always kind of work out that way. Um, so it won't take off the points there? No, no. And, and it, it, even if it, um, in Math Excel, even if this, so if it was written, if you multiplied this out and got like negative 2x uh, plus 6x squared minus 28, if you type that in a math Excel that way, it's still going to count it right. Um, and, and here's the thing that we just did. So I want, I want to take Desmos real quick and demonstrate. Um, this concept. So we've got, we had 2x plus 4. And we multiplied that by 3x minus 7. And then once we did that, we ended up with 6x squared. Uh, what was it? Minus 2x, minus 28, right? So what we did, we, we said that this multiplied out should give me that. So when I type in x to be, just give me a number for x. I heard 3. Do you see how when I plug 3 into both of these, it still gives me back the same 20? So that tells me that this is an alternative version of that. Okay. If I plug in you know, 4, it does the same thing. Uh, if I go 4.2, it does the same thing. If I go uh, 4.2, 1, 2, 3, 4, 4, 5, 7, 8, okay, just random numbers. So does that prove to you that it doesn't matter what I choose? Those two numbers are going to be the same. So that means these are two equivalent formats. Shut up. Um, okay. Now, the reason I'm talking about this is because eventually when we get into the, the textbook and start focusing on our real task in this chapter, 
is that we're going to be asked to graph parabolas. You guys ever heard of parabola before? Yes. Okay. Um, so a parabola is, for those of us that uh, maybe need a refresher, a parabola is... That shape right there, okay? Um, they're gonna ask us to graph those things and, and work inside equations with those things. Um, and in order to do that, I think effectively, we need to understand uh, that something like 2x plus four and 3x minus 7 as factors, if I multiply those together like that, does that give me kind of that shape? Does that give me a parabola? Okay. But we can also rewrite that as 6x squared minus 2x minus 28. Does it give me the same graph? That kind of makes sense to everybody? Okay. So they're going to ask us eventually, can you take this uh, it, it might seem right now kind of backwards, but they're actually going to start us eventually with that equation, and they're going to ask you to graph it. Well, a lot of the graphing of that actually comes from being able to rewrite something like this. Okay, So right now we're working on multiplying these together to get this. But eventually we'll try to undo multiplication to get back to this. So it's the idea of like if I give you 2 times 3, you can tell me, that that is six, right? right? But if I ask you what are the things that multiply together to give me six, you can work backwards and find two times three, right? Three times two. Um, so that's kind of where this is this is heading. Uh, if you want that foresight or need that foresight, and what, what's going on? All right. So let's go ahead. And so what they'll say is they'll say simplify, multiply, and simplify. Okay. So that's what we're going to do here. Um, Yep, yep. So what is what is x times 4x? What is x times 4x? 4x squared? Okay. What's x times 3? 3x. Okay, so that is the f times f, first times first. That's outside times outside. Or if you want to view it as just distributing this x, to the 4x plus 3. So now what am I going to multiply here? Am I multiplying just 6 by 4x? Negative 6. Negative 6. Good. Okay, so negative 6 times 4x gives me what? Negative 24x. Negative 24x. And then negative 6 times 3 gives you negative 18. Okay? So what happens is that those two terms right there, when we, when we do this, and this is always going to be the case if you FOIL, the O and the I terms become like terms. Okay? So you can combine. You can always combine. You can always add those together. So we got positive 3x and negative 24x. What's that going to add to? Negative 21x. And then I've got the other things just attached to this. So 4x squared minus 21x minus 18. Now, my thought is, guys, right now, if you want to make sure that you've done it correctly, can we use Desmos and type in both versions and then choose an X value and let it evaluate? Or can I type them in both in the Desmos as a graph, and as long as the two graphs overlap, then they're the same. Does that make sense? Okay. Um, so the rest of these notes kind of talk about um, using the FOIL technique, but I want to just go through, or we won't do all seven of these, um, but let's go through... Let's go through this first one. You guys do this first one on your own. And we'll see what we come up with. Good, good. So 2R times R gives you 2R squared, right? 2R times 1 gives you 2R. Okay, negative 3 times R gives you negative 3R. Negative 3 times 1 gives you Negative three. So these two are like terms, right? So we have two R squared, negative R or minus R, minus three. Okay. Do this one. Or do this one with me. What's A times A? 
A squared. What's A times 1? A. Okay, so now what is negative 1 times A? Negative A. And what's negative 1 times positive 1? Negative 1. What happens to these two things right there? They cancel. So it leaves me A squared minus 1. Okay. If you want to write that as A squared plus 0A minus 1, there's nothing wrong with that. It is correct. I think Math Excel will probably balk at that. They might throw an error. Um, they're they're going to look for that one. Um, what about... Thanks. What, what about this one here? Let's do this one. Okay, now this isn't going to be a quadratic or a parallel, but the, the procedure is still the same. What's x squared times x? x cubed now. So we, remember, we're adding the exponents. What's x squared times negative 3? Negative 3 x squared. What is 1 times x? 1x. And what is 1 times negative 3? Negative 3. Now, in this case, in this case, are there any variables up there that are the same? So are, they, are there any variables that are x's but have the same exponent? None of them have the same exponent, right? So there are no like terms. What I want to make sure that we are all aware of, all, we remind, you've learned this, you've, you've demonstrated in the past that you, you know this and you've, you've shown me this, but I want to make, because I, I still have college algebra students that do this, okay? Um, even when I taught calculus, I had calculus students that would do this kind of stuff, where we get like 3x squared plus like 2x, and they want to rewrite that as like 5x to the third or something, something silly. You can't do that, okay? That is not uh, a procedure that is allowable, okay? You have to have matching variables with matching exponents to add the numbers out front. Is that something we can do? Do you know why you can't do that? <laughs> All right, we'll, we'll, we'll talk maybe a little bit later. Real quick, real quick, real quick. One more. One more and we'll be done. Dude, Dude just bear with me. One more. Okay, so does FOIL work on these? Do you have a first times a first? Yeah, do you have an outside times an outside? But when I go inside times inside, I don't know which ones of these are the insides, right? Does that kind of make sense? So FOIL kind of blows up there. doesn't work. But does distributing that first thing to all of those, does that work? What's x times x squared? x cubed. What's x times 3x? 3x squared. And what's x times negative 4? Negative 4x. Okay. Then can I take 2 times everything over here? Does that make sense? So 2 times x squared? 2x squared. 2 times 3x? 6x. And then 2 times negative 4? Negative 8. Good. Okay. So now, are there any like terms with the 3x squared? 2x squared. Good. So we can add those and get 5x squareds, right? What can I do with these? What do those add to? 2x, good. And then we've got our minus 8. Okay, now, those are, like, like I said, the, the goal here eventually is to work with quadratics, things that are squared, uh, power of the 2. Um, but early on in a lot of courses, in building to that, we learn all the procedures, all the operational stuff, multiplying, uh, foiling, distributing, how we do that. Um, not only with binomials that generate quadratics, but maybe here a binomial times a trinomial. Um, if we can do that, if you can do these and be successful with these, then the idea is that I should be able to give you any one of these lesser difficulty type problems, and you should have great success with those. Okay? Right. Great lesson. Done? Okay, so there's an assignment. It's called Multiplying Binomials on Math Excel. Yeah, it's called multiplying binomials. I couldn't, I couldn't give it a section name.
There is a question. So I'm using a different textbook. So in Math Excel, I have to, if I use it, I, I get, I'm allowed to use 20 questions from a textbook that is not, that we haven't bought. Um, but I always have to include one question from our textbook. So the question at the end, like it's like, choose the smiley face, choose the frowny face. It's an orientation question. Um, but when you get to that and you think, what in the world is going on here? You might, you probably get it wrong. Is that going to be on the quiz? Huh? Yeah, I'll put it on the quiz. Um, that's, that's why that's there. You don't want to think, well, what in the world are we doing here? But it's just so that I could assign the assignment. 